Oh yeah. So it's time to paint the driver. And I've decided I'm going to paint his uh, jersey red and his helmet blue. So I'm just going to work on this part first and then um, in here got to work on his face coloring and the uh, the mask inside which sort of is the I'll paint it black for almost like a baklava um, and then we'll go from there. Well I should have been looking at the instructions a bit more because that was for the frog. For the grasshopper you want to paint this one. So we'll start that whole process over again. Guess on the plus side, there's no uh, black or there's no base, so it won't matter if I run over the paint color. And this is all getting screwed down from the top of the buggy body. So again, I'm not going to worry too much about anything else. I'm going to paint the whole thing red. Perfect.
So to speed this along, um, I finished the painting on this and you can see one, I painted that one, but that's actually for the frog. The one that's for the grasshopper is this one here. So I started it again and you can see I've painted the straps a brown, uh, the buckles with some silver, and then the guy here, I've painted his helmet blue uh, with the back, uh, the black baklava kind of thing. And then just put in a little couple of points just for the eyeballs. Um, and I think it looks pretty good. It's not perfect by any means, but I think it looks pretty decent. The funny thing is, I noticed something on the box art. Notice I've painted the helmet blue. He's blue. That's a blue helmet. So... The, in, I didn't mean to do that, but I've actually ended up painting it exactly uh, the right color. Um, the red, well, that's different, but I, I'm a fan of red, and there is some red on the grasshopper, so I'm okay with that. So that is the um, painting. Now, what's obviously going to happen is when I take this off the parts tree, it's going to leave some white, and I'm going to have to chop off the little burbs and whatnot from the plastic. So there will be a bit of painting still to do. Uh, just some touch-ups, uh, but I'm going to let this dry um, overnight, and then I'll come back and cut it all up and, and attach everything, and then do the touch-ups then. So we'll wait till morning, and then I will uh, start the next step of just putting this guy together. Okay, so <clears throat> it's all dried up now, so I'm going to take all the pieces off of the parts tree. Actually, I think I'm just going to do the um, the body first. But you can see that I'm going to have to clean up these um, uh, parts off the tree so it's still white. So I'm going to have to paint those now and do some touch-ups. Um, but this is going to look really cool. So there's our guy off the parts tree, and I've cleaned up um, the burbs. Um, I'm leaving it this way until I put it together and then I'll see what needs to be done. So these are the screws. So you can see that the guy needs the little white pieces, um, which are those two pieces here. We're going to attach the helmet to the, to the body and then I'll see what needs to be touched up with the paint before we go and install it. And you can see that it gets, he gets screwed to the roof of the car. So as you can see with step 22, we need to put the driver figure together and we need to put the lights onto the body. Now, as I was just showing you that I have taken them off of the parts tree and I've done a bunch of touch-ups. So as of right now, this is still drying, but you can see that there are no plastic burbs anywhere. This is completely ready to go. So the paint's just drying. Um, I have even painted the un where the screw goes. I painted it blue after I screwed the helmet together so that it's less visible on the back side when it's sitting in the in the car. So I'm still waiting for that to dry. And same thing applies to uh, these lights, which I've cleaned up as well. And you can see that the where it comes together, I've painted again. So they're perfectly clean. And same with the other one. And with this one, I just decided to add a little black on the belt buckle itself just so that it's not all one color. But I think this is going to look pretty sharp. So I'm just uh, waiting for that to dry. And then we can move on to attaching them to the body. And then the next step is going to be putting on all the stickers on the body. And the other thing is with the body itself it said you needed to paint it as well so i've painted the back as they suggested and i've painted the roll bars the same color there's a couple of er errors i went over too much you can see i'm not that bothered i'm not a perfectionist with this i don't it's not going to bother me in the least because in time that may wear and i'll repaint the the roll bar and and try again but the body's coming along 
and I'll be able to soon put the stickers on. So the last part on this was putting on the driver and the lights, which I have done. So there you go. The lights are in and the driver figure gets screwed from the top of the roof. So it just hangs there. But I think that really looks quite sharp. That is so cool. So we'll now move on to step 23, which is putting on the stickers. So this is one of my favorite parts of building the kits is putting the stickers on. So you can see that that's the whole point of step 23. And these are all of the stickers for the car. Now, one of the things that I would suggest is that when you're cutting the decals, cut as close to the edges as you possibly can, because that way you don't have this excess plastic that, you know, clear plastic showing through on the bodywork. You'll only sh see the decal. So I'll cut one up and I'll show you what I mean, but the closer you can get to the shape of these stickers, the better. Some of them won't. I mean, with this, I'm not going to cut in and out trying to cut around it. I'll, I'll just do as good a job as I can completely before putting it on, but I'll show you what I mean. So for example, sticker seven, it goes along here and then stops somewhere here because there's another sticker that goes on. So I have cut out sticker seven, and if you've noticed, I've cut it out as close as I can. Again, not totally perfect, and I can see a couple spots I wanna tidy up, but I'm going as close as I possibly can so that when this is attached to the car, you'll only have the sticker. You're not gonna have all this excess um, sticker clear plastic around it. So that's what I'll be doing with all of the stickers on this car, is cutting as close as I possibly can without getting too close to the actual sticker. So there we have the first sticker that I've put on. And it's not perfect either, because I think I needed to come over just a little bit farther this way. Um, but I'm happy with how it's gone down. And of course it goes over the hole, so I'm probably gonna clean this up a little bit so that the hole is completely clear of any of the excess uh, sticker. But I think this is gonna look pretty cool. So I'm gonna continue on um, putting the stickers together. Okay, so there we are. And this is where we're at so far. Now it's not doing too bad. I actually like the way the stickers are, are coming together. Couple of little spots here and there that didn't quite work and I've kind of tweaked it a bit, but that's okay. Um, I'm gonna work on the other side now. Uh, the interesting thing is, most of the Tamiya kits require you to cut them out. And I know I said cut them close, but if you look at this, I don't know if you can see, but they've actually pre-cut them. So you just have to peel and stick. Normally they don't, they're not like that. So it's making it possible to put the stickers on a lot easier than normal. So this is cool. So I'll just continue with uh, this side. Okay, so I have now applied all of the stickers and here is the finished body. That just looks great. Uh, like I said, there was a couple of errors here and there, but overall, I'm I am good with this. This looks this looks fantastic. So now it's just a matter of screwing in the body, because uh, the this is screwed in as opposed to pins. Put up the aerial, and we can actually do a test drive with this. Well, here we go. Step 24. It was putting the body on. Uh, and feeding the aerial through uh, this section here so that it comes up correct, which is done. Uh, I haven't actually put the aerial, um, uh, the actual plastic cover of the aerial on, but the car is finished. So there you have it, the finished grasshopper. I really do think this car looks super cool. Yeah, there's quite a bit of, uh, suspension travel in the front. There's not a lot of uh, suspension travel in the rear. I think there's gonna be a lot of bounce, but I think that's why they also call this the grasshopper because it really is gonna be bouncing all over the place uh, with that solid axle. But as a whole, I mean, this, this really does look unbelievably cool. 
Um, and this video has been so much fun to put together and I certainly hope it's been helpful for you. Uh, maybe this is going to be a starter kit for you and, and these instructions will be helpful in, in getting you started on your build. So thank you very much for tuning in and I do appreciate the support that all of YouTube has given me with my channel. I'm excited to keep building more and we'll go from there. So, you know, once again, uh, we'll see you in another video.